All right, CDL Book Club, Jeff Mills right here. CDL Book Club grounds. We're getting ready to perform the modernized checklist test. This is good for throughout the United States, Class A. I'm going to enter the vehicle using three points of contact. Let's go. Entering three points of contact. And I'm going to put my clipboard up. Put the key in the ignition, just get it out of my hand. Put my seatbelt on. I'm going to turn the vehicle on using a safe start. I turned the key on. We're going to let the, let the ABS lights went out. Let the heater coil go out. My DEF tank and fuel, I'm sorry, my DEF gauge and fuel gauge properly works. Uh, let that heater coil go out and we're gonna turn the vehicle on and build the air pressure up to 120 PSI, starting now. So now, we're gonna start while the air pressure is building up. My city horn, my air horn properly works. My left turn signal indicator, the right turn signal indicator, four-way flasher indicators, and the high beam indicator all properly work. Turn that off. The push in the lever, my windshield wipers are not cracked, not broken and secure, flush to the windshield. The blades are not dry rotted or frayed. The brackets have uh, not cracked, not broken and secure. No illegal wells, no loose or missing parts in that vent. The windshield is not cracked, not broken and secure. No obstructions, no outdated stickers. The seal around the windshield is not dry, rotted, or frayed. All my mirrors, my hood mirrors, my blind side mirrors, my spot mirrors, and flat mirrors are all not cracked, not broken and secure and adjusted for me and clean. The brackets have are not cracked, not broken and secure. They're has, they have no illegal wells, no loose or missing parts in that bent. That sneeze that we just heard means that my vehicle has reached the governor cutout rate. So I'm going to go ahead and start putting three fingers up, which means I'm going to turn the truck off, turn the key on, and push in the parking brake and trailer brake. Starting now. Turn the truck off. Turn the key on so the dash lights up. And push in the parking brake and trailer brake. Let the air settle. I'm going to hold the service brake down for one minute and the vehicle should not lose no more than four PSI starting now. And we're going to say that a minute is up. Take the foot off the brake. Say that the vehicle did not lose no more than four PSI. Now I'm going to fan the brakes down to 60 PSI and the low air pressure indicator and buzzer should come on. Then I'll continue to fan my brakes down to 40 to 20 PSI and the parking brake and trailer brake that I pushed in should pop out starting now. Low air pressure indicator came on, properly works. Continue to fan my brakes down, eyes on the brake valve. They both popped out. They both pop properly work. So now I'm going to turn the vehicle back on, build the air pressure back up to the governor cutout rate. While I, while I build the air pressure up, I'm going to ramp the engine up so that I can build my air pressure up faster. But while I do that, I will explain my service brake test. For my service brake test, I would drive five miles an hour forward, apply the brake, and the vehicle should not pull to the left or pull to the right, no unusual feeling, all right? Now, while I do that, I'm gonna explain my emergency equipment. I have an ABC fully charged fire extinguisher, three reflective triangles and spare fuses, six to be exact in a fuse box, and they are secure. Now, my heater, turn my vents on, defrost, I feel at the top, I feel down the bottom, it properly works. Turn to the vent now. I feel the vents, they properly work. 
All right, so now I can turn that off. And now I'm above 100 PSI, so I could go ahead and perform my, my park and brake test because I have enough air to do that. So now I'm gonna go ahead and perform my park and brake test by pushing in the park and brake and putting the vehicle in drive. And my trailer brake is holding, so I'm gonna tap my accelerator and the trailer brake held, it properly worked. Leave my vehicle in drive, pull the parking brake out, push in the trailer brake, tap the accelerator to tug against the parking brake. I tug, it, the parking brake held, it properly worked. Put my vehicle back in neutral, pull the trailer brake out, and this concludes my parking brake test. Now, I would, I would ask the examiner to for a lights operations check to check all my lights. I would, I would turn on my four-way flashers, my left turn signal, right turn signal for the front, my check all my ID clearance lights, and then ask the examiner to go to the rear, check those lights, turn on the four-way flashers, the right turn signal, left turn signal, and hit the brakes, and they give the examiner gives you thumbs up. Then you say, okay, so now that's everything is good. Get, turn the truck off and get out using three points of contact. I'll see you out front. When you turn the truck off, put the key back in your pocket. In the front here, I want to position myself to be right here in the front. So I'm gonna check my ID clearance lights on, on my truck and trailer along with the turn signals. They're all not cracked, not broken and secure. Amber is the proper color, free of condensation. And red to amber in the front, red to the rear. The, ID, the headlights and fog lights, they're not cracked, not broken and secure. Clean and clear is the proper color with no condensation. No leaks. My suspension is balanced. If the suspension wasn't balanced, I'd place the vehicle out of service. No leaks or puddles or broken glass underneath the vehicle. If I had that, I'd place the vehicle out of service. All tires are properly inflated to the manufacturer's specifications. Open up the hood, control the hood, go to the passenger side. Only thing we have on the passenger side is the windshield washer fluid reservoir and the lines. They're not cracked, not broken and secure. No leaks, the lines are not dry, out of the freight, properly clamped, cap is hand tight. Let's go to the driver's side. On the driver's side, I have the air compressor and lines. They're not cracked, not broken and secure. No leaks, the lines are not dry, out of the freight, properly clamped, it's gear driven. Underneath the air compressor is the steering pump and you can trace that hose, the, the, the lower hose, to go to the stirring pump. It's not cracked, not broken, or secure. And lines, they're not. The lines are not dry, or the freight. They have no leaks, and the lines are properly clamped. It's also gear driven. The engine oil dipstick is not cracked, not broken, and secure. No leaks. I will check. How I will check the oil? I pull the dipstick out, wipe it off, insert it back in, pull it back out, and it should read between the ad and the full mark. I will check it with the engine off. There's no transmission dipstick here. The coolant reservoir and lines, they're not cracked, not broken and secure. No leaks, the lines are not dry, rod or freight, properly clamped. The reservoir reads between the ad and the full mark and the caps are hand tight. Now we're at the steering system. So the steering, power steering fluid reservoir and lines, they're not cracked, not broken and secure. No leaks, the lines are not dry, rod or freight, properly clamped. The reservoir reads between the ad and the full mark, mark. All caps are hand tight. The steering shaft, the steering shaft is not cracked, not broken and secure. No illegal wells, no loose or missing parts, not bent. It has no more than two inches of play, free of debris. To the gearbox, the gearbox is not cracked, not broken and secure. No loose or missing parts, no leaks. The steering linkage. The steering linkage is not cracked, not broken and secure. No illegal wells, no loose or missing parts, not bent. Not bent. They're connected by castle nuts and cotter pins. 
and in between all metal parts are rubber bushings and they're not dry rotted, afraid and properly greased. System number two is the braking system. The ABS line and the brake hose, they're not cracked, not broken and secure, not dry rotted, afraid, no leaks from the hose. The, br the, the brake hose go to the brake chamber. It's not cracked, not broken and secure, no dents, no leaks. There's no push rod and slack adjuster on this truck, so that means I have disc brakes. So inside the wheel are my disc brakes. They're not cracked, not broken and secure. No grooves, no brake contaminants, such as metal shavings or oil. And the brake shoe liners are not cracked, not broken and secure, not worn dangerously thin. Suspension, we have the leaf springs, leaf springs, U-bolts, axle the hangers in the rear and the hangers right here in the front with hanger mounts connected to the frame cross members and shock absorber all these parts are not cracked not broken and secure no illegal wells no loose or missing parts no parts are bent and the leaf springs are not shifted or missing and no extra holes in the frame and no leaks from the shock absorber next is the steering wheel. The steering tire here is not cracked, not broken and secure, not dry rod afraid, no leaks, no cuts or bulges on the side wall. The tread is evenly worn. The tread depth should be no less than no less than 432. How I would check the tread depth is with a tread depth gauge. How I would check the air pressure is with a rubber mallet or air pressure gauge. I'll check the air pressure at the valve stem, and the valve stem is not cracked, not broken and secure, and the valve stem has no leaks, has no, no um, it has a metal cap. Front steering tire cannot be recapped. The rim is not cracked, not broken and secure, no illegal wells, no loose or missing parts, not bent. The lug nuts and studs, they're, they're all not cracked, not broken and secure, None are loose or missing. If they were loose or missing, they would show rust or shininess. And the hole that the studs go through is not elongated. The oil hub is not cracked, not broken and secure. No loose or missing parts, no leaks. I would check it by reading the sight glass. Now, we will close up the hood, strap it down on the passenger side, strap it down on the driver's side, and now we're going to work down the side of the vehicle starting with the lenses and reflectors so the lenses we already did the side markers so we can check that off the traffic monitoring devices we did that so we could check that off the battery box we're gonna get to that fuel tanks let's do that now so we're gonna start with the DEF tank and lines the fuel tank and lines and my air tanks and lines on my truck and trailer they're all not cracked, not broken and secure. No leaks. The lines are not dry rotted or frayed, properly clamped. All caps are hand tight. The air tanks are drained daily, free of condensation. Now, the battery, the battery is right here under the catwalk. The battery box is not cracked, not broken and secure. No loose or missing parts. Inside the battery box are the batteries. They're all not cracked, not broken and secure, no leaks, no excessive corrosion around the post. The lines are not dry rotted or frayed. Now, we're at also to continue the reflectors, lenses and reflectors. I have a reflector and DOT tape here. They're on my truck and on my trailer. They're not, not cracked, not broken and secure, clean and proper color. My connector box on my truck and trailer, they're not cracked, not broken and secure, no loose or missing parts, no leaks. The red line is the emergency line, the blue line is the service line, and this green line is the electric line for my truck and trailer. They're not cracked, not broken and secure, not dry rod and afraid, no leaks from my hoses. The glad hands for my truck and trailer and electric connectors, they're not cracked, not broken and secure, no loose or missing parts, and no leaks 
and the glad hands have rubber bushings, they're not dry rod right afraid. To the fifth wheel. Fifth wheel area. I have the apron, it's not cracked, not broken and secure. No illegal wells, no loose or missing parts. And not worn or bent. It sits on the fifth wheel skid plate. It's properly greased with no gap. The fifth wheel sits on the platform. The platform has mounting bolts. The release arm and the lock pin are in the lock position, which means that the lock jaw is locked around the king pin and the king pin is securely mounted to the apron. All these parts are not cracked, not broken and secure. No illegal wells, no loose or missing parts, and not bent. I have clearance here so that my truck and trailer don't hit to my landing gear. The landing gear is not cracked, not broken and secure, no illegal wells, no loose or missing parts, no parts are bent. The pad is in a raised position. The crank arm is in a lock position. I will inspect my frame on my trailer and cross members the same way as I inspected my frame and cross members on my truck. The ABS light is not on the test. To the rear of the trailer, my ID clearance lights, my left turn signal, right turn signal, four-way flashes, and the brake lights. They're all not cracked, not broken, and secure. Red is the proper color with no condensation. The DOT tape, and that's the last thing right here at rear of trailer. There's, it's not cracked, not broken, and secure. Proper color. Now, if you are interested in purchasing any of the books for your pre-trip inspection, your skills books, or the exam books, the modernized text textbooks, is that right here at this website at the cdlbookclub.com. CDL Book Club is where you get CDL minded. Thanks for watching. Feel free to give me a call if you have any questions. Hello?